Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over some items and we're going to start with this uh, vase with some flowers in it. And I bought it because I like the shape of the vase and I like some of these flowers. I feel like it's a little too much for this vase. Uh, so I'm going to take some of those out and I'm going to paint the vase. Now I've already cleaned this and uh, I'm going to give it uh, two coats of the color sandbar. Now this first coat um, actually was buttercream and then I decided that I wanted to go a little bit darker because I'm going to be finishing this off with a white wax. So I want it to show up and in order for it to show up I'm going to have to go a little bit darker. So um, after I did this coat of buttercream and let it dry well then I my top coat was the color sandbar and both of those are dixie bell colors and then when that dried well then uh, i went over this with some white wax so i just brushed that white wax on and then wiped it off with a paper towel and that's what i did to the bottom then when i got to the top i just used my paper towel to apply it and wipe it off and as you can see, that white wax really shows up with this color, uh, but then I'm able to keep it a really um, neutral color. And I took my wire cutters and cut some of those flowers away that I felt like were standing up too tall above this. And, um, and then this is what it looked like finished. Now the next item that I'm going to make over is this frame that I thrifted, which is in really good condition. Uh, but this is not the color that I want for it because what I want to do with this is make it kind of a message board for the shop. And so um, I'm just going to give this two coats of the color sandbar. Now the back of it was, um, was removable, but the glass for some reason was maybe glued in. Uh, it just wouldn't budge. So I'm going to have to paint this with the glass in it. So I'll give this two coats of the color sandbar. And then uh, once this is dry, then I'm gonna let, or I'm gonna use the white wax on it also. And it will have all this pretty detail for the white wa wax to settle into. And uh, so that way I can keep it neutral. I'll be able to use it in any of my vignettes uh, when I need to put a message there. And, um, and it will be, I'll be able to change it. So what I'm gonna do is put some uh, scrapbook paper behind the glass, and then I'll be able to take a permanent marker, or I guess you could use a, um, an Expo marker, and, um, and then with an Expo marker, you could just kind of wipe it off. With permanent marker, um, which is what I'm gonna use, um, you don't have to worry about customers touching it and wiping it off. And then you can just take some alcohol and clean that off. So the longer it sits, obviously the harder it is to remove, but it does remove. And, um, and so that's what I'm going to use on this one. Now what I'll, have, what I'll have to do, because I wasn't able to remove this glass, and I didn't want to take this off, so I just take a razor blade and scrape that paint off, and it comes off very easily. That's a lot easier for me to do than trying to take this off. As you can see, this white wax is really making a big difference in this, and when I get to those uh, flowers at the top, it really shows up. And um, I really like the look that I get from this one. And then it's going to be a very neutral, I'm going to put a neutral... Um, scrapbook paper in the back of it and so it's, it'll be a really neutral sign but a real soft pretty look um, and then again I can use it in any vignette and if I didn't mention it I put that scrapbook paper behind the glass and so it gives it a pretty background but it's uh, not so busy and it's light enough that anything that I want to write on there will show up well and now the next item that I'm going to make over is another lamp. I actually made over a few the other day, and this is one, and this one's worn really badly, so it has to be painted for sure. But again, I like the flowers on the front, so I'm going to paint everything except the flowers on the front in the color sandbar. 
and I'll just kind of keep this vignette going together. So that sandbar is going to be my neutral color. And um, so um, I clean this really well, and then I'm going to go over it with slick stick first. Uh, because of this being glass, I want to make sure that it sticks well. So I just carefully uh, went around uh, the, the white area there on the front with slick stick and put one coat on that and let it dry well. And then I did the same thing with two coats of the color sandbar. And immediately I'm loving the color sandbar with this uh, image on the front. So I'm just carefully painting there over um, all the area except for that white. And um, again, this color is just, I feel like really working with this. So I do cook two coats of this, let that dry well, and then I'm gonna be using white wax on this one as well. And then after I get this finished, um, it's almost there here. I've just gotta put the white wax on it and uh, wipe that off. So um, I just brush that over all this detail and then just gently wipe it away and that will let all that white wax settle into the detail. And then once I get the lamp part done, then I'm going to start working on the lampshade. And because the lampshade is so dark, it's in good condition, but I don't like the color of it at all. So I'm going to have to strip all that off and start over. So um, I just strip it down to that wire. Now you can do any lampshade like this except the cheaper ones that only have that ring around the top and around the bottom. And usually those will have a hard surface on the outer edge instead of just cloth. So just watch really carefully when you buy a lampshade uh, that it is one that has the wires that are running um, vertical because uh, those can be stripped down and redone. The others can't. So uh, these are the ones you need to look for and any style, as long as it has that wire base. And now what I'm gonna do with this one is I have a piece of lace fabric and I'm just gonna stretch it over this. And um, so I'm just gonna start, I don't worry with cutting it yet uh, because I'll just, cu I'll just cut once this is dry, cut all the excess away. So um, I just glue down each of these little wires and make sure that I keep my fabric taut. And, um, and you just kind of have to take your time with this and be careful uh, because for one thing, if you don't use a low temp glue gun like I do, uh, and my granddaughter used a low temp glue gun and still got burned, uh, I know maybe my net, my hands are calloused at this point and I just don't feel it anymore, but this doesn't burn me when I'm using a low temp gun. So just take your time and make sure that you keep it pulled and, um, and just cover the whole thing like this. Now, if, if your fabric doesn't work out to where you can just kind of go completely around like this, maybe it won't reach at the bottom at some point, then you can just cut that off down that, down that particular wire and go ahead and piece your next piece on. So again, you could just trim all that off and you're still not gonna have to do any pre-measuring and you're just gonna just keep covering it until you get it covered. I think the hardest part for me here was because I did want to try to make it reach all the way around was having all this ex excess fabric to contend with. It was a little bit difficult to keep that out of the way and be able to uh, keep this neat, but, uh, but it did work out and it really didn't take that long to cover this. Now I wanted to do this one like this because I want a lot of light showing through, but I also want to keep this somewhat simple because I want more of the focus to be on the lamp. So um, all that I'm gonna do once I finish covering this is just trim it out well and then uh, and just keep it very simple. 
And as you can see, it covered very well and um, it, it gives you a neat finish. Now, when you cut this off, you're gonna leave just a little bit on the top and the bottom because you're gonna take some hot glue and uh, fold it down inside and just glue that seam down on the inside. So now that it's covered, then again, I'm just gonna take some hot glue and fold that down and finish that edge off. And then it's gonna stay put really well and I can finish that off with some trim. I do that on both the top and the bottom. And then I'm just gonna glue some trim on the top and the bottom. I just use some vintage lace and I'm gonna glue that around the top and the bottom. Well, actually I'll, I'll use a different kind around the top and then to give this even more of a finished look, then I'm gonna take a thinner lace. I'm actually using the lace that I get from the Dollar Tree and just uh, trimming it out at the top of this lace at the bottom. And that will just give it more of a finished look. And now this is the item that I wanna make a hang tag to match. And I thought of using a, um, tissue paper roll on this one and just kind of create a totally different style of hang tag. So I'm just using my little tool that I put my transfers on here and I'm just really, really giving that a sharp fold on both sides. Now I love to look at new materials and new ideas for hang tags and uh, I was just thinking about this one last night and I thought this would be a really neat two-piece hang tag. So again, I'm just getting that really, really tight on the sides. And then I'm gonna cut this off because I don't want it to be very long. I've got a little piece of cardboard here for what I'm gonna put down inside it, kind of that size, and just kind of guesstimating where I need to cut this. And I just cut maybe about an inch off the bottom and um, and then glue that bottom closed. And obviously you need to use hot glue here in order to hold that. So essentially you're just creating a little envelope here to stick something down in or a little pocket. So I just glue that really tightly. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna use my circle hole punch on the top of this and uh, I'm going to show you the brand that I use. It's called um, Shape Cutters, I think. No, it's actually called Paper Shapers and I'm using a two inch cutter. Now I'm pretty sure that Hobby Lobby carries these. This is an older one that I got uh, that I actually thrifted, but I'm pretty sure Hobby Lobby carries this brand. Uh, but the reason I'm showing this is because I have a lot of people ask about this one and it's because uh, I'm able to cut uh, thicker items with it. It's a, it's a really good quality one and even this folded, this is cardboard obviously and folded in half so I'm having to cut through two at once and it didn't have any problem with that. So that is the brand that I'm using here. So now I'm gonna take some of my antiquing ink and just antique around all the edges of both sides of this. Now I have lots of clip art that I've gotten from, um, from books and things like that that I've torn out. These are all flowers here and I know I want flowers because the lamp has the flowers on the front. So I actually want roses and um, I'm trying to find some that will not only fit in here, but will work with the colors in my lamp. So um, I've torn these out ahead of time. And actually I, I got my daughter to do a lot of these and she tore them out and antiqued around the edges. And now they're ready to go for my hang tags. So things like this are good to work on when uh, maybe you're watching TV or if you're like me and you don't watch much TV, but you watch uh, YouTube crafters, then, um, then while you're watching, you can, it's just some kind of busy work that you can do with your hands and, um, or anything that you're watching. Um, but it's just something I think to do ahead of time that really helps out when you're crafting. 
So I've just taken this little piece of cardboard that is uh, about the same size as my, my picture here of these roses and uh, I'm just kind of tearing it close. Now I'm okay with some of that cardboard still showing. I actually like that. It just adds that layering and uh, but I, I want to make sure and have the cardboard on the back of this because I want it to be stiff enough to go down inside. So I'm just going to glue the, the picture to the front here and then uh, antique around those edges again so that I get the edges of that cardboard also. Now I also want to cover uh, the front of this um, of this tissue paper roll. So I'm going to be using that same scrapbook paper that I put inside the frame on my second makeover. So um, that will kind of tie this vignette together also, but um, I wanted that neutral look. So I just thought I would use that. And, and when I cover that, instead of cutting it to fit exactly again, I'm just tearing, uh, I just tear that to fit on the front. And then I just kind of in, antiqued any area on this that didn't get it. I, I had to tear that little circle area there at the top and then I just kind of antiqued around the edge. Now, uh, I'm gonna add some lace around the top, and this is just a little scrap of lace that I had left over from something, or actually that I tore off another piece of ribbon, and I'm just gonna glue it kind of around that neck at the top. And here, you can just do whatever. I just felt like that top needed to be finished off some, but I didn't want it to be too dressy, so this is kind of a scrappy lace. And um, I think it came off the top of a gathered piece of lace, and I didn't want it to be gathered. And so it, it's good to save uh, those little scraps for items like this. Now, I'm placing that little flower in there where I want it to show and then make sure that I hold it in place because I'm gonna I'm gonna um, use my hole punch and punch through all three of these and and luckily it didn't have any problem punching through all three of these uh, but now I'm just gonna thread some more of that lace around that um, to make my little hang tag and then you'll be able to, don't pull that too tight because you want this to be able to pull up and down. And I just really like the look of that. I think it's really neat. I still want to add a little bit to this. So I stamped a little rose on there. And this is just a, a stamp that I've had for a long time. I think I got it um, at a thrift store. So um, I just thought that would be cute on there. And then this is just a little piece that I've cut from a doily that I used on something else. And um, I just put that there at the top, added a little bit of script to the, to the front and the back. Uh, the back, all that I'm going to do is just put that script. And then, um, and then I'm going to just kind of scrunch up some lace and layer over the top of that little doily piece. And uh, I think I do a couple little layers of lace here. And then glue a button on, in the center and and then that's all that I do to that. And I just really love the look of how this turned out and just that little flower peeking out in the top there. I think it's just such a sweet look. So I think I'll be making some more of these hang tags and I'm always looking for something new to do with tissue paper rolls because if you're like my family, we really go through them. Now I wanted to make a little riser set. So I found two little candlesticks that I've had for some time. Uh, thrifted both of these at some time or another. And obviously they don't go together, but I'm gonna make them go together. So I'm gonna uh, paint both of these in a color that I've mixed up, uh, kind of a mossy green. And I think I used kudzu and rebel yellow and just mixed up the green that I'm gonna be using on this. But I'm gonna paint both of these into two coats of that color and, uh, and then go over both of these with some white wax. And then obviously these have lots of detail for that white wax to settle down into. So this kind of item is, a, is really good to use a wax on because you do have lots of places for it to show up. Now I was at a yard sale a couple weeks ago and they had some really beautiful 
china designs and uh, but most of the uh, plates were the saucers and you can't do a whole lot with that well actually not a saucer i think it was more of a bread plate it was the size of a saucer but it didn't have the little circle for the um for the teacup so i got them because i know i could use them for something and i'm going to use a couple of them on this so i just picked a couple of them that uh, would go with this vignette and I'm just going to use some E6000 and glue them to the top of these candlesticks. And that will bring these two candlesticks together even more. Sometimes you can take two uh, candlesticks that, that aren't even the same kind and paint them the same color and make them a set. And it works. Uh, but if you can find another way to marry them together, then it even looks more like a set. And I like to use E6000 with items like this because I feel like it glues glass a lot better. And as it turns out, these really went well with this. And, um, and I just used the larger one for the larger top and then the smaller one for the smaller. There wasn't much difference in them, but uh, I just let them dry overnight. And then it makes some little shabby chic style risers and they can be used for uh, to put your jewelry or change in or whatever. Uh, I just think they make a cute little set. And now I have a few hang tags to show you. And the first one, uh, my daughter actually wanted to do one and she made hers out of a large wood hang tag and she's gotten into a lot of um, decoupage she like she's learned that she likes to decoupage so uh, this is the one that she made and I love the raised images that she added uh, some of the images that are already in the decoupage the next one comes from Texas from Mary and I think Mary did a beautiful job on this I love this uh, the um, image that she has on this one this is so so my style i love that little bunny and i just love the french country look of it and i also love the scripture on the back and that little doily i think this is a beautiful little tag i also love the little buttons with that little crisscross pattern i think that's a neat little touch and now my next tag comes all the way from australia and this was made by Maureen, and uh, she said she wasn't happy with how it turned out. I think it turned out wonderful, and she put all the little elements from Australia on there, which I think are awesome. She said she put uh, some of her favorite birds and birds that are native to her area, and I think that was a, a nice touch. And also, on the back, she put a little dot on the map there to, to show her location in Australia. And I thought that was a very sweet touch. Uh, you guys did an awesome job. I'm just so proud of how well you guys are doing on your hang tags. And I'm so thankful at what I'm learning from you guys. And um, I also want to say thank you to both Mary and Maureen for sending me some, uh, some beautiful crafting supplies. You guys are just awesome.